Aloha Kahayaka from Thomas Square where there's a uh, attempted seizure raid uh, I'm monitoring it there's a uh, court ordered uh, stipulation agreement uh, in place they came to tag uh, yesterday all the property was uh, switched out. Yesterday was blue tents day. Today is red tents day, as you can see. Um, the uh, cars are entering the... Uh, cars and trucks are entering the park. And then they'll come up in the front there. We're looking toward the uh, Victoria Street uh, encampment here. Uh, we got uh, some stuff coming in here. Bring the uh, markers. There's supposed to be a 10 foot, a smaller exclusion zone so they can work. Of course, if they look at their photos, they'll see that uh, none of these tents were here when they tagged uh, yesterday. In fact, uh, these are um, obviously different tents and they're not tagged. They're a different color and everything, so. They used to uh, tape off the entire area, and now it's uh, just uh, this area, and that allows us a, a better way to um, There is no seizable property. I'm going to get over on this side here. So this is raid, you know, it's in the high 50s or around 60. I've got my uh, count uh, at home. Here's uh, Kenna Shimizu, Deputy Director of the Department of Facilities Maintenance, made the cut over to the uh, new administration. His boss, uh, Wesley Chun, former boss, uh, the former director, named defendant in the suit, so he'll also be named. You can see the uh, crane in the back, which is used for uh, which is used for to put stuff away. They bring their own hi. They bring their own video. Of course, you're not going to see that anywhere. The difference is my video you're watching now, it goes directly to uh, Ustream and then YouTube. Their video is used for different purposes. There's a lot of stuff in there they could tag. They could tag some dogs. Is that the law? I don't believe it is. I believe that the thing has to be there for a little while. Well, what does the law say? The law is about 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 the there's a raid going on. There's nothing here. Nothing here that was uh, tagged. Nothing here was here uh, more than a few hours ago. Okay, just right there, but nothing. <laughs> like they know, they just take off. There's nothing here. Come on, guys. We got it figured out. 
the guys in Mo UDE had it figured out. They're kind of wandering around. There's nothing here that's been tagged. This woman here has made the shift over to the new uh, admin, too. So. Guy in the Aloha shirts, police officer, public affairs officer. They're not here to protect the rights. <laughs> For both the police and the crews, it's got to be kind of an easy gig because there's never been any kind of uh, illegal material or activity uh, here in the last 60 raids. Uh, no one busting out Shaolin moves, no weapons, no drugs, no drug paraphernalia, nothing like that. This is happening at cost to uh, taxpayers. Oh yeah, Corp abusive corporations. Abusive corporations is now laying off. They're cutting hours and uh, cutting pay. Cutting pay. So people end up on the streets, and the uh, city and county is retaliating against those individuals for trying to work and sure. trying to maintain their life instead of holding the companies accountable for uh, Why the not? of resources. Why not go after the real bad guys? Right. Well, they're big guys, right. and these guys work for them. You know, Cobol says that he's all for, you know, uh, people not using public grounds, but oh. what is he... Uh, Planning on doing? Building a condo. <laughs> You're a pain in the ass. And then he, what, the food bicycle. trucks? You got the food trucks that use this stuff too, right? Here's our, here's our buddy again videoing. They got two videographers. We got two videographers. Our stuff goes on Ustream. Our stuff is available for the public. Ours is for the public good. Theirs is for their own purposes. It's to intimidate the public. It's used against you. We're, for you guys, they're against you guys, okay? That's the short story. You'll never see this guy, you'll never see this guy's video. He's not doing it for you. I'm doing it for you. That's the difference. And I'm totally public. I'm H. Doug on Twitter. Honolulu Doug on Ustream. There's a sign, recognize the crimes of the 1%. Uh, recognize the 1%'s crimes, I'm sorry. And here's some signs we use that are uh, off art after dark, which separates uh, public facilities uh, between the wealthy and the destitute. So. I want to see what's going on there. There's some police. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like about ten uh, policemen. There's an interesting sign. This is a free speech tent. It says, I am a tent. Often I am used for camping, sleepovers, or housing. Today I am the face of the houseless and a movement fighting for social and economic justice. I am a sign. I am art. I am a message. Okay. Uh, here on the side it says ordinances 10-26 and 11-029 are inhumane. Stop the war on the poor. These are two city ordinances that uh, these are city ordinances that um, criminalize the poor and uh, occupy type uh, occupy type um, Encampments. This is your tax dollars at work. We have a couple people here observing, look like uh, probably from the uh, city. 
I think it might be the uh, new director of uh, facilities maintenance, Ross Sasamura, I think. In the past year, past 60 rays, there's been no contact uh, between the city and uh, the movement, anyone here. There's just been 60 rays, police, uh, vast expenditure of taxpayer dollars, um, this is a self-governing encampment. Uh, it's never lost more. It's never lost a single night on this corner. It's a it's a political statement. Um, nothing is when they tag uh, the tents. The tents are are swapped out to um, avoid being seized the next day, as we did last night. They've got. Oh, a dozen police here, at least a dozen uh, DFM, Department of Facilities Maintenance Workers. They're huddled around this uh, the free speech tent. I hope uh, reading the sign. I believe that's raw. You can see uh, Ross, actually a smart guy, holds uh, several uh, patents on stuff. Uh, engineer, really by training and trade, and why are engineers doing this kind of stuff? And if they're going to uh, do things pursuant to a court order, why isn't there an attorney here? If there are homeless people here and they're trying to help the homeless, why aren't uh, services here? Why aren't the police uh, applying the law for the protection uh, of the poor rather than the persecution of the poor or for the peaceful protesters? A lot of people at the encampment are at work. Countdown sales event. A thousand dollars APR. That is now that is that is really good. That is really good. I just want to point out so you might want to zoom in for your viewers. Even while raiding the poorest of people on the island it becomes a commercial <laughs> I know like NASCAR. <laughs> To check a countdown sales event. Yeah. Countdown. Zero APR. I'm so glad the Suzuki is so concerned about Americans and Hawaiians and what's happening to them as they deplete the resources of our community so the city and county <laughs> steals from them. That is the funniest thing. This is this is the uh, the danger tape. It's not danger tape, it's not police. The exclusion do zone is uh, submitted to uh, advertising uh, revenue, I guess. It's uh, Suzuki event, zero APR, time to buy a car. And I guess, you know, there are some, uh, there is a ordinance pending that would allow homeless to sleep in their cars. So I guess um, you could get a... You know what, I think it's connected to that ordinance that uh, will allow homeless people to sleep in their cars. So I think they're advertising Suzuki cars. Oh, like, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. Advertising for Suzuki. Buy a Suzuki and live in luxury <laughs> now. Yeah. <laughs> Step up, and move up. percent APR for five years Get a loan. with approved credit, though. Get a loan. That's, that's, right. that's, the, that's the job. <laughs> Ken Shimizu made the cut over to the new administration. Okay. We're being kind of wise, guys. You know, it's better than the bullhorns we used to use. We used to have bullhorns out and, and uh, do a lot of yelling and, and stuff. They're taking a lot of time. Uh, they're photographing the... Uh, the... Uh, 
tags, I think, as a as a record of what they're going to leave. We'll get an actual tag in here. Uh, this is kind of a boss lady. She. Uh, And they keep stapling stuff on and, and against uh, in our protest because the, the, the stapling actually causes damage and they, they know that. So these tags mean that they'll be back uh, in 24 hours, and in 24 hours, these everything tag won't be here. It'll be out in private. I just question the fact of taking people off tag. Yeah. When did that become part of the court order or law? Uh, uh, if there's no purpose in taking or confiscating, or if there's no violations, then what are they doing? I think that guy watching is Ross. I might go Who's that? The new uh, DSM head. Oh, the new DSM head. I'm going to go see if it's Ross. You can see, if you just join us, we're at Thomas Square corner of that's Ward going up and down, and we're on uh, Baratania Street. There is a uh, court-ordered agreement about um, how uh, the Occupy has to be treated because of uh, previous violations of the law and whatnot. Excuse me, are you uh, Ross? Are you Ross? You're not Ross Dustin? You're the new um, director of uh, Department of Facilities Maintenance under uh, Caldwell. Tell me, um, you know, there were... 50 some odd raids uh, last year under the Carlisle administration. What What is the plan here under the new administration? I'm sorry, I don't have any comment for you. A any comment at all? I've done Thank some you. research and I know you have patents, I know you're an engineer. Are you a boss? Are you in charge of this operation? He's the new uh, West Chinese oh. director. Hi, Terry, this I is Terry. Nice to meet you. I didn't know if you were aware or not, but I'm pretty sure that the law states that the item has to be on the sidewalk for 24 hours before you can give it a 24-hour notice. Okay, well, I'm just letting you know. You might want to look it up because I'm pretty sure that's the law. And by your tagging process yesterday, it's very verifiable that this tent is no way possible has been here 24 hours if you're late with a 24-hour notice, right? If you were here, we left, we broke down the blue tents, we put up red tents, meaning they only been up maybe... 12, 16 hours when you're tagging them, which is a direct violation of the written law. I'm letting you know that. So you might want to look into it. Uh, We're at uh, the end of. Uh Tagging and seizure aid at uh, Thomas Square. More than one year, continuous uh, occupation of the place. Uh, never a single attempt to uh, talk to um, the protesters. They're moving the exclusion zone here. Um, now on the other side is uh, the um, is the encampment um, homeless encampment on Victor in the Victoria Street side. I call that South Occupy. You can see uh, the garbage truck. They're not supposed to destroy property on site. But they always bring a garbage truck. What is the deal with that? 
Yeah, this is a weird exclusion zone. Yeah, this is a weird exclusion when you're when you're boxing in the lane. Let them do their job and we'll find out what the heck. Yeah, I'm not sure what this is about. There is plus the exclusion tape is uh, a Suzuki kind of thing. If you're wondering about all these movable uh, pylons and odd yellow commercial exclusion tape, there uh, there is a uh, court order that allows us uh, within 10 feet to uh, videotape and observe uh, to make sure that the violations that have occurred in the past don't occur. There's a new um, administration because the old guy, Peter Carlisle, who's a former prosecutor, was voted out of office. And I think uh, the Occupy can take some credit of that for exposing uh, the uh, treatment of the homeless. Uh, my own opinion is the, the homeless problem, quote unquote, this, this is the garbage area and they're actually uh, okay to take that stuff. The problem, I think, is that politicians receive a lot of um, pressure from uh, their constituents, all of which have homes and addresses and vote and contribute and that kind of thing, to uh, get encampments off the street, uh, even if it means uh, breaking the law, breaking the Constitution depriving a class of uh, protection under the law and constitutional protection. And that's bound to get uh, the people who do that into trouble. So the uh, city and county and a number of named defendants in, um, are subject of a federal uh, lawsuit filed in the uh, Ninth Circuit Court and uh, those ordinances and th the actions will be voided uh, eventually the law moves rather slowly and uh, what will the what will that be here's a guy <laughs> you'll never see this guy's video on YouTube they bring their own videographers it's, uh, it's an attempt to intimidate Yesterday was Blue Tent Day, today is Red Tent Day. Now we're over, I'm going to walk over at South Occupy. South Occupy is what we call the actual uh, homeless encampment here. These guys have it a lot rougher than the Occupy because uh, they're not covered under the law. Across the street is the uh, Honolulu Museum of Art, formerly known as the Honolulu Academy of Art, former residence of Anna Rice Cook. You, you'd be, you could live in a house like that. That was her house. Her husband was Charles Montague Cook, who's the son of the original founder of Castle and Cook, which was the first. Uh, which is the first, one of the first five uh, sugar and land barons to profit off of the um, over the uh, invasion of Hawaii in 1893, January 17th, the overthrow of the uh, monarchy. This is a very historic area. This is Thomas Square. where sovereignty was returned to the Hawaiian people after a British misadventure. Uh, Admiral Thomas came here and put the Hawaiian flag back up at the center of the square where you see that banyan. And uh, King Kamehameha III, Kawikeauli, proclaimed Uamao ke'ea o ka'aina i ka pono. 
the life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness is the official translation. Some, some translate it, uh, the sovereignty of the land uh, continues in perpetuity. Uh, we're watching uh, DFM crews in orange. DFM stands for De uh, Department of Facilities Maintenance. These are the guys that really should be uh, fixing potholes and instead they're here. Uh, their task is raiding uh, the homeless camps. So they make as many as raids on as many as 12 camps in one day. We heard that uh, from sworn testimony by uh, one of the city supervisors in court. A lot of police. No bullhorns. We used to do bullhorns and stuff. But you know, you, I, I don't know what to say except you get used to this. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through so we can pan through now that we're we're not taped off. I'm gonna pan around to show what's going on. Uh, if you're just joining us, they have uh, tagged the tents but not seized them because they're they haven't been here uh, long enough to seize. The um, ordinance. 11-029 uh, is aimed at criminalizing the homeless who are, who are a real powerless uh, segment of the population. 11-029 also um, used to uh, criminalize uh, occupied type encampments. It came out just as uh, the movement was picking up steam on the mainland. And has run into a snag here because the deoccupy camp here is not uh, as well, they have attorneys. <laughs> you know, you have to follow the law. So, not. Uh, powerless and are actually standing up for the rights of the homeless and that sort of thing. During the 50 some odd raids there's uh, never been an attempt to uh, contact, mediate, uh, work out any kind of arrangement uh, with the camp. The other guy with this guy here with the with the ponytail, he's uh, you streamer uh, the pineapple glitch. If you want to um, follow his channel, this will eventually get archived at uh, at um, YouTube. My YouTube channel is. Uh, the YT Doug, or you can look up H. Doug Matsuoka, it's now under my real name. So I'm trying to count the police here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen police here. Fourteen police. They'll probably make uh, up to a dozen uh, raids and other encampments that don't have these exclusion zones, that don't have videographers, that don't have internet, that don't have Twitter accounts, that don't have Facebook accounts. And they can pretty much do any anything they want when they get to those camps. Okay. Here's kind of the garbage corner. This is actually where the trash is put in order to be taken away. And uh, they are taking it, so.
part of what I'm doing is a documentation. See, on the uh, emblem of the HPD is a uh, splintered paddle. Two paddles, and those are uh, emblematic of the law of the splintered paddle or the Kanavai Mamalahoi, which was the first law proclaimed by the first King Kamehameha in 1797 which uh, protects the humble from the mighty uh, by allowing all the poor and humble people to remain undisturbed on the street. Kamehameha knew that if he didn't have the support of the humble people, no king would be able to survive for long. Disobedience of that law, it ends, heaven uh, no make, disobey and die, or a warning to the kings that follow him. If you disobey this, your regime will not last. Or literally, and then if you disobey and die. The uh, attorney that's, that signed off on this law, John Van Dyke, uh, died uh, rather untimely after the law was passed. Not saying there's a connection, but I'm not saying there's not either. The uh, mayor who uh, implemented the law was a prosecutor, and he's no longer the mayor. His regime has fallen. His uh, director that uh, conducted the raids, Wesley Chun, is no longer working in the city's employ. Trish uh, Morikawa is no longer working for the city. So they have fallen. Run afoul by uh, the law of King Kamehameha which, if you want to take it as a Taoist kind of thing, is an observation of the true nature of things. I got a guy right here over my shoulder. My stuff goes up on YouTube and it goes up on Ustream. I don't, your stuff is just here to do God knows what. I have an objection to it. I think it's intimidation. I think it's harassment. I just want to say that for the record, you know, because we got each other before. And you don't talk, you don't narrate your stuff. I'm H. Doug on Twitter, and you can follow uh, my account to find out who I am and where I uh, put the videos and that sort of thing. You can find out where I eat lunch and everything. I'm totally transparent in this. Just thought I'd let everybody know. The uh, policeman who used to come here uh, to lead the police contingent, Larry Santos, is also uh, no longer the police force. He uh, retired. So the encampment has actually outlasted uh, outlasted quite a number of people. The people that have broken the uh, Kanavai Mamalahoi have uh, have fallen. You can see uh, the trucks parked in the um, park. They park a bunch of stuff uh, in the park behind us, and then they block off traffic, and then they use the lane here, and that's uh, Baratania Street. The encampment is near the road because uh, the law of the splintered paddle that I, I just referred to uh, allows uh, people near the roadside to not be disturbed. That's under challenge, of course. It's in the state constitution. Uh, it's incorporated by reference. Some, some attorneys, some uh, legal experts, including uh, the one who uh, died, John Van Dyke, uh, interpreted it to be not a literal law, but to be emblematic of the nature of the constitution. Constitutions are supposed to protect the humble from the mighty. Otherwise, you just have a king. If you just joined us, we're at uh, Thomas Square Park, historic Thomas Square Park.
or sovereignty was returned to the Hawaiian people in on July 31st, 1843. When King Kamehameha III, Kawikeauli, declared Wamaukeo Kaina i Kapono. The sovereignty of the land is perpetuated, continues in perpetuity. Okay, wrapping it up here, nothing much going on. I want to see what what they do over on the South Occupy. Uh, tag and they're taking the orange tent, I guess, because they weren't here yesterday. They're taking a, a tag tent from the uh, actual homeless side. We'll walk over there. Now, I, I told you these guys have it much more difficult. Here's some stuff tagged here. This is where the brother sleeps. You know, uh, this is this is the actual homeless end, and I'm gonna. We have documentation here. That's uh, the pineapple glitch on Ustream is documenting this end. I'm glad of it. These operations are so big, you need several documenters. I'd like to encourage uh, people to document wherever you are. You know, learn how to use your cell phone, learn, learn how to use stream, learn how to get the information out. The more eyes there are, the better, and it doesn't matter on your political affiliation because reality is reality, and people see this and they have different opinions about it. where people actually sleep. I mean, you know, if you've been following my streams, you know, this is home. This is home for so many people. But they're being treated like criminals. And the criminals who are taking stuff are doing it under the protection of the police. That's kind of what bugs me. And criminals are people who hurt other people, who take people's stuff. What do these guys do? We have guys sleeping here in the corner. We're at South Occupy, which is what I call the actual homeless encampment on the corner of Baritania and uh, Victoria. We have a media photographer just showed up. Who knows what what his story is going to be? And that's the problem with the commercial media. They show up, they get a story from somebody, it goes in the paper or it goes up on the web, and it's completely wrong because they don't know a damn thing. <laughs> you know, you guys now know more than this commercial media photographer that just showed up. <laughs> you know. From yeah. Yeah. Where are you from? He's the media guy. Star advertiser got here. The star advertiser should watch my stream. Are you star advertiser guys Sugar. watching me? Nice to meet you. Hey, Dennis. Oh, actually, I just. <laughs> That's one of the tents. Uh, yeah, that one of the is uh, a person who is really studying problem with destruction of property and this uh, is a garbage truck and it goes along with the crews during the uh, during the raids and you can see stuff in there is that an Elmo? Is this an Elmo chair? Elmo chair. Tagged yesterday. It's 
being put in the garbage. Now this truck goes from uh, I'm not sure what is all encampment to encampment and it destroys stuff. So we've seen uh, chairs, tables, suitcases full of food. Just trying to document. No problem. And uh, because the uh, homos have no voice in the community and they don't contribute to politicians and that politicians get a lot of pressure from people because they don't like seeing poor people in their neighborhood, they pass laws that are unsound, uh, that are unconstitutional, that enforce, uh, that require uh, illegal and unethical um, practices by the police, it doesn't do anybody any good. You have to be willing to um, take on the, the real criminals. In the meantime, if you're a corporation and have a lot of money, you can uh, throw money at the uh, legislator of your choice and get a law passed to uh, allow you to grow GMOs or to pave over agricultural land uh, and do that kind of thing so you know that's the main uh, that's one of the problems I have and, and walk around in the street feeling good and drive a nice car and live up on the hill so that's the deal Now, the median price of a, of a house on this island, take a guess, go ahead, go ahead, is over $600,000. The median, the median cost resale value of a used house in Hawaii, in Honolulu, on Oahu, I'm sorry, on Oahu, is over $600,000. The median price of a condo is over $300,000. Now that goes up and down every month. Uh, it's going up now. The source, look at highcentral.com. H-I-Central.com. And month by month, it will give you the median values. I haven't been checking my uh, stream here. Eagle Flyby, hello. Rise PDX, we're uh, restreaming. Thank you. Not a not a really exciting uh, stream here, but it's uh, one of the first conducted under the new administration. The old one was voted out. Uh, there is a court-ordered agreement uh, resulting from a lawsuit filed by the Occupy Honolulu. In the uh, federal court, in the federal Ninth Circuit. So I'm going to walk here now that the exclusion tape is gone. And what they do is they tag. I'll show you tag. They tag the tents. And it says, um, you know, the, the law is against... Is against storage of property. That's how they get around it. So they come back in 24 hours and they take stuff. What opportunity? It's not that we're creating opportunity. Besides, the only opportunity that we really create with this is giving them a safe haven, some place that they can stay away from all the drugs, some place that they stay away from all the fights that happens throughout the rest of the area, or happens within the shelters here. Now, as for a voice, it, hopefully at some point I would like to see that our mayor and our elected officials use some economic sense and say, hey, 
if we're going to spend thousands of money, thousands of dollars to get no value out of it, what can we do to make value out of it? That's, that's you know, and if we can create value, then it helps everyone. We're not here to fight. We got better, I got better things to do than fighting the city left and right. Let me tell you. I mean, I have a job at 13 years of college. I'm fine. But I'm here for a purpose. And that's to say, come on, this isn't right. This is violating people's civil rights and depleting the resources of this island even more. There's no value in what's been attained here. If at some point we use economic sense to give opportunity, we get value. And if those individuals can perform and get themselves off, even if it's only, you can say, well, 40% of the people doesn't want to do anything. I'm not going to argue whatever number you come because you can't tell the rest of the, those individuals that do to screw off, right? If they're willing and they're trying, that only helps the whole community out because it's less depletion of the resources. You gave them opportunity for a much smaller cost than what's going on now. That's all. So, so this is how you present your message? Though. Well, right now, the only way we can do it is because if they're going to beat and steal from the houseless, and there's been numerous instances of that all the way through the silent, someone has to make a stand for them here. And if it, if it comes to the point where every house is individual, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 wants to move here, then we can provide that safety for them, then we'll stay here. But if they can sit, if the city and county can provide safety for them by giving them opportunity to rise up and be on their own, we have no jobs here, and we'll leave. Why would I want to be here to argue this? I don't like living in a tent. You know, it's that simple. It's that simple. For 38 years. This isn't about me against the government. It's about me sitting there presenting, representing the people of this community to say that District 6 alone has two-thirds, if not three-fourths now, of the house's population for the whole state. And this community is paying for the whole state's issue because nobody between the city, county, state is wanting to represent them and that pays some kind of value that gives opportunity for an individual to get off the street and be productive and raise their GDP, help us all out. We all know why he's in a downward spiral if you know the GDP figures. I mean, we're, we're spending $2 billion more every year than what we actually make in revenue. So why are we going to deplete more resources by spending more while violating their civil rights? It doesn't make sense. You know, it's, it's simple. It's easy. Give opportunity. That's all we want. It's not a hard message to conquer, but the city and county and the media would like to paint a whole other picture. But as everybody in this community sees, kicked off at us or not for being here with the tents, we haven't left. I think the I think the problem is people don't see how this is opportunity. That's that's the well, difficulty that well, we have to bridge. Oh well, yeah, that's true. But you know, and so does the rest of the city people. And I know a lot of these officers know. You know, I know I know they're here just to do a job. They have families they have to represent. They have to take care of. They have their own resources that they have to do. So they're not going to sit there and put their own jobs on the line. They're going to do their best job that they can to maintain and represent the city. But the officials that we elect, their job is to find those resources and to find the opportunity so it doesn't deplete them putting a dollar spiral on this community. But you know, you so, I mean, you're right. I need to try and find a bridge that the community understands. But no matter what, we all know, the elected officials know exactly what's going on. Because they see me and they've, I've been dealing with them for over a year. They know exactly what I'm here for and what's going on. But they have failed the public. If the public wants these tents gone because they are an eyesore, come up with an opportunity and give, give, an, give an option for people. I'm not going to argue and say that every single person that you can solve the problem. You'll never be able to solve a homeless problem or a houseless. There's always something that's going to put them on the street. But how you address that is what makes it a defining statement. How you address that represents your, your citizens. And if you fail to even try, you're failing as a government itself. You know, so, so do you think part of it is that people don't understand the situation as well as... Well, the, the citizens came to, to the city and county and said, we want these tents gone. Yeah. This is nice or we can't have this. Yeah. Right? And so various members, and I won't name them off, decided to write up a bill called Bill 54 that, that literally stole from them. Right? 
this is what your job is for, is to take that and say that this is this is wrong that the community doesn't want this. They think this is a good thing because it disappears, but when they see it come back the very next day, or with our camp that it just stays. <laughs> They already know. They're ticked off. They're, they don't care what the reason is. They don't care if we're here for standing up or, or what's going on. They know right now the mayor can talk big and so can other city council members, but no matter what, we're still here. <laughs> right. So it doesn't show anything, and they're going to get even more mad. And sooner or later, they're going to get so mad that they'll come knocking at your guys' door. Right. But you can look like the big guys and the good guys. And just come up with something that gives opportunity, and then everybody can go home and not have to deal with this. The last bunch right? of guys got voted out. So it doesn't matter what the community believes of us. It's you guys that know the difference. So if you know the difference, represent the community and stop the depletion of these resources. Because we already have problems holding on to it. I think really where, where you can present the biggest opportunity and provide the best value, not only for the people that you're here to protect, but also for the larger community that you guys are a part of, is to help bridge that gap, to provide the understanding, and provide some possible... I would like to, but like this the gentleman that was here with the media, or like yesterday, they came down, they didn't mention how you guys are in federal court, right? <laughs> okay, so when they find out that Christopher Smith and a few other people put you guys in federal court, and that a federal judge actually found that there was enough... Uh, enough reasoning to believe that this case was even needed to be heard. Because, you know, they'll, they'll throw it out if they think it's just BS, right? They may not agree that we have, that we're in the right or you guys are in the right. That's what the court case is about. But just the idea that that judge actually found that there was enough reason to believe that there is a substantial reasoning for this case makes a big enough statement. Well, so we're going to deplete resources in federal court while the media says, oh, we won't talk about it. I think, right? I think that's premature. I don't think we've gotten to that point yet. But I appreciate your opinions. Okay. Thank, thank you for sharing your, your position okay. on all of this. It's good to meet you. Okay. Nice meeting you. Yep. You take we'll care. be seeing you again. Yes, we will. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Might be a future okay. defendant. Which of you? Christopher Nova Smith. And that was Christopher? Chris Nova Smith of Deoccupy Honolulu talking to the new director of Depart uh, Department of Facilities Maintenance. Uh, Ross Sasamura, and they're leaving. And Chris is now talking to photographer from the Honolulu Star Advertiser. And we're—if you've been with us from the beginning, you've been with us uh, for Doug. What's your last name? Matsuoka. M A T S U O K A. I'm uh, at hdug at mac dot com if you want to talk. H D O U G at Mac M A C. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. I'm a star advertiser. So Great. Okay. okay. And your oh, name oh, was. Oh, oh, Dennis Oda? Oh, okay. I've seen you. What's his name? Uh, Ross Sasamura, the guy in the beige. You were talking to? Yeah. Oh, Ross okay. Sasamura. He's you know the new uh, director <laughs> of uh, <laughs> um, Department of Facilities at DFM. Oh, oh mega issue. He took a uh, Chunk <laughs> place. That's the ultimate issue. Yeah. 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 <laughs> What's his last name? I think we did. Uh, Sasamura. S A S A M U R A. Sasamura. Okay. Yeah. He took, you know, because the, the oh, new, uh, it's a cabinet man. position. So oh. They change out. So they just. I told that guy. I cited these tents here. Well, what they do is they. Yeah, they tag them. They, they, these tents have only been here a few hours. Oh, oh. When they tagged yesterday, they swap so them out. Here. They put new, uh, oh. new tents in. Uh, Which so one's your camp? Huh? Which one's your camp? I, I don't stay here. I'm, I live oh. up the street. I'm a supporter. Oh, oh, a supporter. So I come okay. down here and I, I've documented a lot of the... Uh, oh, oh. Oh, so if these kids want to stay, they've got to swap them out. Well, that's the way, you know... The, the actual ordinance is against storing property. That's how they get around. So they tag stuff, they come around, and then well, they take uh, what they tag the next day. But these are swapped out, so they can't legally be uh, taken. That's the way. That's the way to go. Huh? Yes. Yeah. And some place to store them. Sure. Twenty-four hours. 
Okay, well, that is the end of the stream, so I'm going to... See, I've been live streaming it, so we have people watching from all over. So signing off from the historic Thomas Square, across from the Anna Rice, former residence of Anna Rice Cook. Thanks for joining us. Thanks uh, for the people who are uh, talking to me, uh, Rise uh, PDX, um, who uh, was mirroring the stream, and uh, Eagle Flyby for the comment. Thank you very much.